a major vulnerability just dropped for React and Next.js, and it's getting a lot of attention. So let's break down what happened, why it matters, and what you need to do next. Let's start with the severity. This one scored a CVSS of 10. That's as bad as it gets. A maximum impact, stop everything you're doing kind of issue. Attackers don't need credentials, special access, or complex tooling. It's maximum damage with minimum effort. The community is calling it React 2 Shell, as it hits both React Core and Next.js, two pillars of modern web development. So the big question, how far does this thing reach? Let's talk blast radius. According to research from Wiz, this isn't a fringe problem. It's everywhere. They found that 39% of all cloud environments they scanned contained this vulnerable code. And 44% of environments had Next.js apps exposed directly to the public internet. This isn't a small corner case vulnerability. It's a systemic issue spread across the cloud ecosystem. And once you zoom out and look at actual usage, the scale gets even more staggering. React and Next.js together see nearly a billion downloads every single week. That's massive adoption across startups, enterprises, and everything in between. So what's actually going on under the hood? The root cause is a classic and notoriously dangerous insecure deserialization flaw. In simple terms, the server can be tricked into running harmful code sent from a client, all because it trusts the data more than it should. It's basically like handing someone the keys to your machine and saying, sure, whatever you say, I'll run it. And the real kicker? It only takes one HTTP request to launch an attack. And as if that wasn't enough, proof of concept exploit code hit GitHub almost immediately. So attackers didn't have to wait. They had working examples right out of the gate. With a severe vulnerability and public exploits already in the wild, the natural question is, how do you respond? Just look at how fast this moved. The vulnerability was privately reported on November 29th, and by December 3rd, just four days later, a public patch and disclosure were out. It shows the intense pressure development teams were under. There was zero time to sit back and wait. So what should you do? Fortunately, your response can be broken into three simple steps. Identify your versions, patch them, validate your environments. If you're using React or Next.js, check your version number and upgrade to the fixed releases immediately. You can visit sonatype.com for a full list of impacted packages and clear remediation guidance. And remember, this goes beyond just React and Next.js. Any framework that builds on React could be affected too, so scan your entire stack. And that leads to a bigger question. How do you protect yourself the next time something like this hits? This is where partners like Sonatype come in. Sonatype can block malicious components at the source using the industry's deepest, continuously updated malware intelligence. We look at behavior, not keywords. So even heavily obfuscated malware can't hide. Our data, hands-on research, and real-world threat insights stop dangerous packages long before developers can install them. This isn't AI guessing at intent. It's battle-tested intelligence built on years of supply chain security expertise. React to Shell is a reminder of how quickly a single flaw can spread. The good news is that with fast patching and protection from partners like Sonatype that block malicious components before they reach your developers, you can stay ahead of threats like this. Stay updated, stay protected, and keep building securely.